Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us? As though by your own power or piety we had made him walk, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. You rejected the Holy and the Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. By faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know, and the faith is that through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also our rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all of the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In Psalm 4, we will read responsibly by the half verse. Answer me when I call, O God. 
defender of my cause. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I cry out, the Lord will hear me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence on your head. Offer the appointed sacrifices. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. May the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or has known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This is one of those weeks where I um, made the assigned lectionary a little bit bigger, and I forgot to write it in the lectionary book that I read from, so I had to take my paper, and I'm just juggling up there. Um, Because the lectionary starts in... 36b, the second half of the verse. And it was kind of ludicrous to leave out the setting. While they were talking about this, it's important to know that the disciples are together and talking. They're trying to figure out. This passage from the Gospel of Luke comes in the Luke's resurrection appearances places, it's still, we're still on the resurrection day. This is still that first day. Mary and the women have seen, disciples have seen, you know, they're, they're trying to figure this out. Two of the disciples have taken off to Emmaus back home. Um, they've run into that stranger on the road and had this conversation where he talked about the scriptures and opened up their minds. We hear that same thing here. But, but, and then they invite him in and he breaks bread and they go, oh, it's Jesus. And he's gone and they hoof it back to Jerusalem. And so they have arrived back in Jerusalem, and they've gone to the other disciples and said, we have seen the Lord. And the other disciples tell about what's been going on there. And while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. This isn't just some disconnected time of Jesus and the disciples. This is right there in the beginning. And they're trying to figure out what this all means. What is going on? this first day. I think it's wonderful that they're sharing their stories, that they're talking to each other as a community. Um, We get this story from Luke, and it sounds very much like the one we had last week from the Gospel of John, which was about the same evening and about Jesus appearing, saying, peace be with you. Um, But the Gospel writer from Luke, he could care less whether Thomas was there or not. What he wants us to know is that Jesus himself stood among them. And he goes beyond that sense of um, Thomas going, well, I want to see his hands, to um, Jesus says, I'm, I'm, it's really me. 
I love that the disciples' stories is shared with us. That our story and our journey of wondering and sharing stories and talking with each other um, isn't just an aberration, but is just like always been going on. After Jesus comes to them, he sa- and they, when he had said this and he showed them his hands and his feet, and they're in their joy, while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. I think that describes my journey of faith way too often. Joy, disbelief, some wonder. And boy, I need everybody else to, to, to be a part of that journey, to, to sort it through. And then Jesus, to, 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 to drill it home that this is something real happening. What kind of hospitality is this, guys? Don't you have anything to offer me to eat? I haven't eaten since, like, Thursday night, the last time I was in here with you. Because that's where they're back, at that place where they had gathered. You know, crucifixion, death, empty in Hades, rising from... This is, this is hungry making work. <laughs> Do you have anything to eat? I don't just have bones and flesh. The word became flesh again and again and again. I have no way to wrap my rational head around resurrection. But I know that the story here today is reminding us that it is more than just theological wonderings and head knowledge something real takes place and it's not until it takes flesh that it makes sense to the disciples they're just talking among themselves going what in the world is going on here it's not until it takes flesh that it is real The word became flesh and dwelt among us. It is still not until it takes flesh that it is real in this world. The writer of that letter of John talks about we will be like him. We are those children of God. It takes flesh in us. We all know the truth of this. I can say I love you as often as I want, but if it doesn't take flesh, if it doesn't come in actions, it means nothing. It's just words. I can say I am sorry, but if I don't do anything to make amends, it is just words. I can say I care, but if it does not take flesh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that is how our journey together speaks to a world that is still just talking among itself about, does anything about this God stuff make any sense? The word can become flesh in their midst by us. I know the word evangelism is not the Episcopalian's favorite word in the Christian lexicon. Um, We shy away from it, but that's only because we've always, in some way, tied it in with just words. Standing on a street corner preaching. Telling somebody that they better accept Jesus. But if evangelism is word becoming flesh, in their midst, if it is us living that witness. I think that's what Jesus is talking about here. You are witnesses of these things, and this stuff is to be proclaimed, and that's that evangelism part that scares us, to in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem, that this is to go out into the whole world, not in words, but like Jesus did it. The word is always connected 
with a fleshly done deed, with feeding and healing, breaking bread together, offering hospitality, offering forgiveness in a way that heals the society. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word was raised and dwells among us. And we bear that flesh now. We are the body of Christ. We are the children of God. The word became flesh. May it be so. May it be so about us. Amen. Let us now stand and confess our faith using the Nicene Creed as found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life eternal. May we know in our lives that the crucified one is alive and comes to us. Turn our doubts and disbelief into awe and wonder until we rejoice in the glory and presence of the risen Lord. We pray for churches struggling at this time, for Christians who have lost faith or entered into deep doubt. We pray that the church may bear witness to your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who seek to relieve hunger and suffering, for those who seek to help people rise out of their troubles. We pray for the Department of Social Services. We pray for the Lenore Soup Kitchen, for the Room at the Table Program, for the Backpack Ministries, for the Helping Hands Clinic, for Yoke Fellow, for the Pay It Forward Food Pantry, for Habitat for Humanity, for the Shelter Home, and for the many small food banks and clothing closets run by so many churches in our community. And we pray for the people who depend on the generosity of others. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for those who have shared their food and faith with us. For all who have sustained our bodies and our mind. For those who have cared for the needs of our spirits. We pray for our homes and our neighborhoods. 
We give thanks with those who celebrate birthdays this week, especially James Hogan, Helen Miller, and Chad Barnes. Are there other thanksgivings? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who hunger for food, for shelter, for love, for spiritual refreshment, for the many who feel rejected or lonely, for the ill who have no one to care for them, for all finding it hard to cope on their own. We bring to you friends and loved ones who are ill and those who have asked for our prayers especially Dan and Jamela, Christopher, Linda, Tina, Claude, Dorcas, Paul, Ellen, Jennifer, and Alan, and for our room at the table guests. Jeff asks, please pray for everybody. Chris asks, pray for the world. With all the wars going on, I hope people see their way out of all this mess. Peggy, please pray for me and my family. Claudette, pray for our neighbor Chris, Tracy, and Cody. They had moved away, and now they move back, and we are happy for it. Jason, as pray for everyone to get the blessings they need. Taylor, please pray for my husband, <coughs> excuse me, Randall. He's in jail, and he's having a hard time with it. He has never been away from our baby girl, Elvie, before. She, she, she's with his mother. I'm living in my car, and he feels to blame for everything. Floyd says, please pray for my friends and family. Steve asks, I have prayers of thanksgiving for a church that's being good to me. It's First Baptist in Indian Trail. What is heavy on my mind at this time is all the wars happening. Please pray with me that America is not drawn into war. Shirley asks, please pray for my family. Tammy and Gerald say, we need your prayers for our finances and our health. Pray for Tammy's brother, Steve, who has such bad legs. Dolly asks, pray, pray blessings on everyone in the world. Pray special blessings on the servants who made this food us. Are there others? Abigail and Curly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We long for the day when we shall see Christ as he is in his glory. We pray for loved ones departed, especially Helen Walton, Buster Van Weary, and Jim Chittenden. Are there others to be remembered? Odell, June and Melvin. We pray that we may triumph over darkness and death and share with the faithful in the light of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Risen Lord, you reveal to us the love and radiance of the Father. You bring us the peace that passes all understanding. We rejoice in your presence and in the glory of your resurrection. Strengthen our faith, O Lord Jesus, that we may continue to be the risen Christ to our neighbors and this world. In your name, you who lives in eternity, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Using the prayer found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to all. Um, really nice problem today to keep running out of bulletins back there. As more and more people kept coming in the door, so thank you to those of you who we grabbed bulletins from and said, you're sharing, um, <laughs> um, so that we could greet each person as they came in. Um, so somebody got my bulletin. That I didn't have many notes written in it, but I think one note um, said about Next week, as we bless the new garden that's going in this week, because we've gotten um, our hands on about half the native plants that we intend to put up there, um, this is, I want to warn you that, you know, the, when you're putting in perennials, when you're putting in things that aren't just going to be there this summer, um, there, there's a three-year plan for those. Um, and I got this wrong the first time, so I wrote it down in my bulletin. It's on somebody's, in front of somebody there. Um, the first year is sleep. The second year is creep, and it's not until the third year that those plants leap into life. So they sleep and get settled. They grow a little bit the second year, but mostly everything's happening underground. And then the third year is when it takes off. So um, next week when we go out to, bl to bless this, um, like the swamp milkweed, when I picked it up this week, the lady says, well, she goes, yeah, those are alive. <laughs> There are sticks that are about this tall above the ground. Um, we're gonna have to flag them so we can find them um, at this point. But so it won't look like this wonderful garden, but what a gift to be putting in native plants that will um, support the native life. Um, I, I, it broke my heart when I was reading about Portland, Oregon, known as this green city, but they did not plant anything native. And they say it's the silent city because no birds, no native birds live in there because they planted all this stuff that wasn't, that didn't feed the native life, the life or other life. So, so it's wonderful to be working towards supporting God's creation in this area by paying attention to that. And I'm really excited about um, that. So the plants will be... The first round will be p being put in on Thursday morning. Um, if you've got a strong back and you feel like putting some plants in the ground at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning is the time to be here. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that next weekend as we focus on creation on Earth Day. I'll remind you that the Adult Forum, Jenny Deal, will be leading us um, focusing on Earth Day and our connections with creation and that next week. I've got the kids for the kids hour next Sunday between the services and we will be um, going outside unless it's pouring but um, we'll be blessing the, the new native plant garden so um, just real excited about doing that. And then the following weekend, you've got dinner plans. <laughs> it's our parish picnic on the 27th, Saturday the 27th. So just keep that in mind. Um, a mostly potluck. There'll be some things provided, but a mostly potluck picnic um, out here in the side.
garden. Room at the table report. You had a, a nice crowd yesterday. 39 meals went out, which was a big improvement over the previous month. So we were a little surprised, but not unhappy. So it, it worked very well. Are there any other announcements that people need? Um, Betty, there are, there's a saxophone concert, and there are flyers on the back, and that's when? Uh, Evelyn, it's just Saturday, 27 is on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Before our picnic. Can you, can you pick up one of those flyers on that and tell me what the date and time on it says? Twenty eighth, Sunday the twenty eighth. Okay, at five p.m. Okay, it's at Zion. Okay, so um, the information about that is on the back table with flyers. Thank you, Betty, for bringing those to us. Yeah, take one home with you. Post it on your. Then don't miss that good music. Local saxophone. Yeah, quartet. Yeah. We now come to God's table, um, and God doesn't turn anyone away who is hungry. All are welcome here to so walk in that love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us.
We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, 
the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. God bless you this day. Keep you as his child forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thank you.
The post-communion prayer is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Rejoicing in the power of the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.